Thank you again for having me today. I'm super excited to share the SpectraWave story and what our vision is for coronary artery disease management and specifically use of intravascular imaging to support uh, stenting. So our vision uh, is all around cardiovascular disease and the mission that we have is to really combine and integrate the latest technology in optics and computational um, methods to improve the outcomes for patients with coronary artery disease. As many of you probably know, patients who uh, exhibit and are symptomatic of angina or chest pain uh, typically are um, recommended for a diagnostic angiogram. And here the physicians, the interventional cardiologists specifically, are looking for major blockages in the three major arteries that feed the muscle of the, of the heart. Uh, this is a very standard, standard procedure. Um, there's about 12 million of these performed each year. Uh, and here, you know, if they identify a blockage, uh, which is shown here in the, in the illustration, the best uh, outcomes come from not just using the angiography or this extravascular imaging to evaluate how to optimize the planning and uh, placement of the stent, but to use intravascular imaging. So take a device that can go inside the blood vessel, uh, typically through the femoral or radial artery uh, access, and evaluate uh, not just the inner lumen, which is what you see with angiography, but actually the native dimensions of the vessel prior to the disease. Uh, um, and in addition, as I'll show, uh, other morphologies that are really important for, to prep the vessel and, and make sure that you have a very successful outcome. The data for the use of intravascular imaging to improve the outcome of patients who are uh, you know, diagnosed and, and um, uh, indicated for stenting uh, is unequivocal. So very recently, actually in the last couple months, there was a uh, meta-analysis done uh, showing that over 22 randomized controlled trials have been done uh, comparing outcomes, patient outcomes, heart outcomes, uh, with angiography versus um, uh, use of uh, imaging versus angiography alone. And you know, you have outcomes like restenting, thrombosis uh, down by 48%, but all the way to all cause mortality drops when you use uh, intravascular imaging to optimize stent placement. This is quite an unusual um, level of evidence and uh, has really driven the field to, to grow. Uh, so over you know, the last five to 10 years, this, this field has seen significant growth, particularly in the US, uh, and is now north of 20% of these PCI procedures, these percutaneous coronary procedures, use intravascular imaging. This is growing not just because of the clinical evidence, but uh, intravascular imaging is actually a very strategically important category uh, for portfolio sales. So many of the large medical device companies have an intravascular imaging product that really anchors and, and creates a beachhead for them to sell their stents, balloons, guide caths, uh, etc. Uh, and this is really supporting a $10 billion plus market worldwide. Now, this clinical evidence has, has continued to drive up and level up uh, uh, societal guidelines, and we expect another level up to level one designation. Today, it's a level 2A. Um, and when that happens, we believe that the market will grow at an even, even faster rate. So where do we stand today in, in the legacy imaging products that, that exist? Well, generally speaking, there are two kind of predominant factors uh, for a physician, and ultimately there's trade-offs between these two. So one is image quality and image capability, and the other is workflow uh, constraints. So you can see, you know, these are the three top uh, market-leading intravascular imaging products that are on the market. Um, and in one case or the other, either the image quality is not as high or the workflow is, is, is challenging. And this covers both acquisition of the data, acquisition of the imaging uh, set, as well as interpretation. So there's a mix there that has to happen to come to, to get a good outcome. So where do we sit? So we've really developed and pushed uh, a core optical technology called optical coherence tomography. Uh, beyond what we thought was uh, actually achievable to, and, and we refer to this as deep OCT, uh, really a play on words there on the depth of penetration that we achieve, as well as the deep learning algorithms that, are, that underline the, the core technology. 
and we combine this with near-infrared spectroscopy to provide very accurate um, evaluation of lipid, so in addition to the structural imaging. And really across the board um, have addressed many of the key limitations that we believe have limited the adoption of these technologies uh, in, the, in, the clinical, in the clinical space. So what does a product look like? So we have a piece of capital that you can see on the left side here. Um, this is a you know, custom uh, device that we've, that we've designed and, and built. Uh, we have a single use uh, disposable device that goes through the coronary arteries, again, typically through the femoral or radial access. Um, and then uh, on top of this, we have a proprietary software platform. Um, and because we really just designed this in the last few years, it is truly using the latest both hardware and software to enable almost real-time uh, AI analytics, and I'll, and I'll show you in a moment what that, what that looks like. But really the core of the technology is around the imaging itself. And I'm going to show you a few back-to-back uh, -back and, and uh, competitive comparisons uh, that really exemplify the, the, the leap that we've made in image quality that is of course, very nice to look at, but actually very critical in this, in this space. So our image is, is shown on the right here against a uh, standard OCT product uh, by a competitor. And some of the things, features that you'll see is not only do we clearly see the plaque and the back wall of the plaque, which is really important in modifying vessels prior to stenting, we clearly see the vessel boundary, which is important for determining the native uh, lumen dimension, uh, vessel dimension. Um, and then also we have this yellow arc, which represents validated and quantified uh, lipid content in this, in this region in the, in the vessel wall itself. Uh, here is another example. This is a great example of uh, our ability to identify the, the vessel boundary, which is referred to as the EEL, or external elastic lamina. Again, this is super important for stent sizing because this is the native dimension before the, uh, uh, the disease that, that you see in the uh, intima here. Here's some examples against the uh, IVIS platforms. Um, and this is, you know, this is really actually against a, a platform that is truly, um, I would say, more on the standard of, standard of care. Um, and what you see is with our technology, you can very clearly evaluate the calcium load and specifically the, the thickness of the calcium, which is, which is super important, um, again, when you want to pre-modify the vessel prior to stenting. Um, and here's another example. Again, it's truly night and day difference in the image quality that, that we bring to market. But this is not where we stopped because ultimately it's all about how quickly can you get to the answer and how quickly can the physician make its decisions. So this is the, a standard algorithm that's used with intravascular imaging, MLD Max. Um, and I'll show you with our platform, um, after we do a sub-second, uh, you know, less than one second pullback uh, scan to collect the data, within a few seconds, all of the key analytics are presented to the physician. And what you're seeing down here is a physician scrolling back and forth and placing flags exactly where they want to place the edges of the stent. And immediately what, what, what comes out of this is all of the dimensions that are needed to size the stent. So here they know they need a 38 millimeter stent with a proximal expansion at about 2.8 millimeters um, and a distal at 2.8 as well. And what's really wonderful about this system is that once that information is, is acquired and, and, and settled on, it shows you exactly where those flags are in the angiographic image, which is what's used to guide the stenting itself. And then similarly, once the stent is placed, they re-image the, the vessel to confirm that uh, the stent was placed in an optimized way. Uh, confirm the location and confirm uh, both that there's no dissection, so damage of the vessel wall itself, um, good apposition of the stent to the, to the lumen, um, as well as a full expansion of the vessel to reference diameters. Um, and again, if there is a region, in this case, we automatically highlight if there's a lack of expansion and we show that uh, on the angiographic image so that they can go back and dilate the, dilate the image. We have had incredible uh, reception to this technology, both uh, from a clinical standpoint and now commercial. So we are now an early commercial stage company. Uh, we recently deployed our first uh, systems and are truly getting uh, a very positive response to the, to the product. Um, as I said, we're, we're now in our commercial stage um, and we're taking a very you know, systematic uh, approach here. We're in a limited market release today, uh, which we believe will, will drive us towards a uh, full market release later this year. 
Uh, we are in a Series B fundraise for those who are interested in this space and would like to find out more, please, please reach out. Um, incredible, you know, growing market, um, truly best in class platform. Um, you know, the, the commercialization has now kicked off with, with fantastic response and just a fantastic team. Ultimately, this is all about the team. Um, I didn't show you any pictures here, but it is, uh, you know, from the founders all the way through to the engineering staff, just, just an amazing group that, that's developed this. Um, and soon we'll have a physiology add-on to really complete our uh, diagnostic workflow. So super excited about what's, what's to come. And again, please reach out if you have any questions or, or would like to participate. Thank you.